Then the light is plugged in to the light. Look at this stool like hop. a light situation. Dude, I did some serious jerry-rigging to get these lights set up. You guys can't see it. This one's on the Red Bull fridge. The other one's on, like, what is that? That's Pat's big black viper. That's what he likes to call it. He just throws that thing around whenever he gets bored. It's a workout machine. Anyways, guys, uh, welcome to this episode or video on the ASC channel. This is the new YouTube channel we're bringing in for you guys in the Facebook group and I guess wherever else you end up watching this, so, or wherever you come. Maybe you come from, uh, what's a good place to come from? Give me a good, give me. Hawaii. I was thinking more like some Neverland type <laughs> shit, but Hawaii, yeah, that's a good place to come from. Uh, Megan, introduce yourself. For anybody who doesn't know, this is Megan. Fortunately or unfortunately, depending on how you want to look at it, mm -hmm. she is my younger sister. And she's our, she's today's guest, first interview guest on the ASC, on this platform, so. Tell me about Yeah, um, my hello. name's Megan Oldham, mm -hmm. as Bruce said. I covered that, yes. Siblings. <laughs> um, we're, I'm three years younger than him, so I'm 19, and uh, I'm a freestyle skier, thanks to him. Y yeah, you, you are a freestyle he, skier. He bullied me into the sport, basically. If you guys haven't paid attention, I didn't ask you to do this, but check this white sweater out. Oh yeah, this is That's nice. this is new ASC merch. Yeah, me and Patty. Well, actually, so we I had no plans of doing merchandise or anything like this with ASC anytime soon. But then Patty's like, Patty was kind of half on board because we had the Facebook group and we were kind of putting some work in. But I wanted to go other ways with it, and he's like, "Wait, I need a new sweater. Can we make clothing?" I'm like, "Sure, I guess." And then all of a sudden, we ended up with a yeah, shit a shit ton of clothing, and we ended up. Pat didn't end up doing any of the work. It was all me. But we they turned up... out super sick and super comfy. Yeah, we ended up with some sweaters, long sleeve hats. As you can see, the hat here, the white too. Except for I've been painting this one. Anyways, moral of the story is we got, we got some uh, clothing and stuff that got... It's almost sold out now, so interesting. Anyways, back back to it. Megan is a uh, freestyle skier. I'm a freestyle skier. A lot of you guys that are in the Facebook group and part of the SC are freestyle skiers because that's where most of the base came in from. So this interview should... This, is, this one's right down your alley. So, mm -hmm. Maggie, Maggie Poo got back. You're quarantined still, right? I'm still in quarantine, yeah. I have like four days left. So that's why we're doing this podcast now, because Megan, uh, Megan's got some free time. I got not a lot of free time, but I got enough to do this. And yeah, so you just came back from Dubai, uh World Cup, and then you went, but you were in, uh, where were you before that? We were in uh, Sasfe. Yeah, so we went out like August... No, September, beginning of September, just do a training camp in Sasfe, um, at Stompy Grounds, and then just because of, like, all the COVID restrictions, decided to stay there for, like, the extra month until Dubai happened, so we just, like, roamed around Europe a bunch, did some skiing, did some, like, touristy shit, and then went to Did you just swear Dubai. on this episode? <laughs> Sorry. You're not allowed to fucking do that, Megan. Sorry. <laughs> this is my goddamn brand. I'm, not allowed I'm, to I'm kicked off already. <laughs> You're kicked off. <laughs> oh, so part of the reason we're doing this is because, um, first of all, I thought it'd be an interesting interview, but Megan, uh, one of the big things I want to do with ASC is help support um, athletes that can't necessarily afford it uh, on the way up. Megan is not quite at that stage yet, but she's a perfect, or she's not at that stage anymore, but she's a perfect uh, perfect person to have bring on, or to bring on to uh, the SC is like our first kind of rider. Obviously, she's not sponsored by us for clothing. She's just a member of it. She's sponsored by Roxy, so we're not cutting into your lane there, okay? <laughs> but uh, hopefully we might get the SC on some X Games gold medal podiums this year. That would be pretty sick, depending on COVID. And, yeah, we'll uh, see. But we'll see. We'll see what happens. Anyways, Megan's helping us out with that stuff. So uh, we are looking for some riders and stuff to help uh, promote the brand and for us to help uh, with them or help grow them in the future. It's kind of where we're going with a part of this, but... Um, yeah, but you came back from Dubai, you went to Stomping Grounds, and you're just raging your little spear off while I was stuck here not being able to ski. Uh, so, let's hear about it, because there were some strict regulations with COVID, but were you, like, allowed to do some, like, yeah. some stuff, or what was um, that like? It was interesting, like, it was a new, new, uh, new part of the whole, uh, comp scene now with all the COVID stuff, and, uh, definitely... It definitely was not exactly what I was expecting. I kind of thought, like, with most freestyle skiing stuff, it would be, like, a loose program. Like, for the most part, it's usually... Pretty, yeah, like, you guys are there pretty to ski, loose, have like, fun, and train. Yeah, it's yeah. not like like all these other sports where you're, like, doing rowing and you, like, can't even go out at night or, like, do anything because all you do is train, sleep, and, like, breathe your sport. 
Like, yeah, freestyle I mean, you do skiing, that with skiing, but... Yeah, you do that with skiing, but it's also, like, kind of got this, like, culture vibe to it that you, like... That is a culture. That's, that's yeah. a culture freestyle you, skiing. Like, yeah. You have your own, like, freedom and, like, all that sort of stuff. So, like, going into it, I think all the athletes kind of thought, like, all the COVID restrictions would be pretty loose. But that was not the case. Like, we got there. We all had to, like, stay in our own hotel. Um, we were, like, had to stay in these, like, little groups of, like, two or three. They call them, like, bubbles or whatever. Um, and then we had to get tested before we got there, like, 72 hours. If it was 73 hours, you can't even, like, you're not allowed to compete. Um, and then, like, the first day of training we did, it was super This is good. for the Dubai World Cup. This is the yeah. first World Cup of the year, right? Yeah, so it's kind of like the test event for all the, like, COVID yeah. restrictions. This is the only event that's happened so far. Yeah, the only one that's happened so yeah. far. And it went through, which, like, we were all kind of surprised about. Anyways, like, we had, ended up getting tested three times. Uh, yeah, and... So it's fun. Everything ran smoothly, yeah. It was kind of fun to watch. But... Yeah, so everybody's heard the horror stories about the testing. How bad is it? Did you get it's, the up the nose one? I got the up the nose one twice, and then down the throat. Which one's worse? I think up the nose is worse, but it depends how far they shove it down your throat. Like some people, like some of the doctors, just, just crank it down there, cram it down your throat. They want to see if you can deep throat it or not. Yeah, and it was the funniest thing ever because, like, at the COVID testing, it literally was just like this trailer outside of a hotel, and there's like all the athletes from the World Cup. And it's like 7 o'clock at night, yeah, and people are just walking up one by one going to get their COVID test. So people are up there and you're like listening to like skiers from like the U.S. team like gagging on like the little <laughs> like, on these, like, COVID, COVID, COVID test, stick, yeah. like the funniest the COVID thing stick. Ever <laughs> That's a good yeah. porn name, the COVID stick. Don't mind me, I actually have uh, pork in my teeth because I just munched a pork. <laughs> that's pork that's disgusting. Here. Yeah, so that's super sick. Um. And then obviously you had a little bit of trouble. I personally know this because I'm like, oh, you're my sister, right? So, but <laughs> with, like leading up to it, like you you weren't able to ski for a while because you were kind of stuck. Like where were you stuck in? Like in between. We uh, just like it worked out that like they were allowed to keep prime parks open, but like only for the teams that were already signed up. And so, so the Canadian team wasn't already. Yeah, signed the up. Canadian team wasn't already signed up, which meant that. We had no training up before the comp, so when we showed up, we had one day of training, and I think we had, like, two hours, so it was, like... So you had two hours of training. Yeah, it was two hours of training for to come up with, like, your comp run for the next day. Yeah, like which it was, is... It was, like, full on, but... Which is, for a World Cup event, it's yeah. pretty seer. It, it's pretty hard, but it's not a big deal if everybody's kind of in the same boat, but there was, like you said, some people that were able to stay and train on that... Did yeah. they change the rails at least? They like hadn't put the rails in before the But they comp, had hit people in the But like jumps. those people who were in prime parks had been hitting the jumps for And they like, already had their jump two weeks already, yeah. which like I two mean, weeks on a jump compared yeah. to two hours is a little bit yeah. of a difference. Yeah. I didn't care that much, like it was fine, but like for sure there definitely was like a little bit more opportunity for mm. some of the athletes to train. For sure. And yeah. I'll link the there's a link to the whole like event that was they put it up on YouTube, F F A S did. Like, yeah. Did you see that? Probably. Graham said to me, they have the whole live event up in FS, oh, so I'll, no link that, I'll link down to it below for people who want to check it out. They skip some runs here and there, but it's pretty good. And yeah, the course, it looked like it was like perfect weather. Yeah, we had perfect weather. There was like one day of training after qualies that was like kind of bad weather. Yeah, because you guys snowy. skipped that day? Yeah, but like every other day was bluebird, like perfect conditions. Nice. Yeah. Sick. And you ended up fourth, fourth of the World Cup, first event of the year. How do you yeah. feel like about that? <laughs> feel good or bittersweet? Uh, oh, I'm happy with fourth for sure. I mean, fourth. Are you? I'm super, I'm happy fourth with my good. skiing, but like fourth is like, it's the, it's, it's like the death position. You're like, oh, well, like, <laughs> like fifth is almost I did better good, than fourth. I did good, but like, yeah, yeah. Because you're like that close. Yeah, no, but I was super happy with like my run. So yeah, for I'll, sure. I'll take fourth any day of the week. Yeah. And then move up from there. Yeah, exactly. Because, like I said, fourth is bittersweet. Fourth, yeah. third. Fourth is first, last. So. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I like that. I haven't heard that yet. Yeah. Who told you that? I think it was my trainer who told me that. Matt? He's, he's like, congrats, you got first, last. I was like, I like yep. it. I like it. Maddie knows what he's up to. Yeah. All right. So I got a little list of questions here. Uh, we'll quickly run through them. We're only going to keep these uh, interviews slash uh, post of the blog slash whatever else it turns into. Uh, a little short, like 15 minutes, so we'll run through some quick questions, but this upcoming contest season uh, is the Olympic contest season, which is huge. 
for somebody in your position. Um, this is the year that you qualify for the Olympics, and with COVID, everything is up in the air. You don't know if they're going to have the testing events, because what was the first event that you qualified for the Olympics with? The was test the event? Cadrona um, competition, but it got cancelled. And then they have... September. And then that does the World Cup in Dubai count for points for the World Cup? Uh, no, I think it like I don't know. I could be wrong, but I think for like each nation, it's different what events are qualifiers. Oh, okay. But like for the Canadian team, Dubai wasn't a qualifier. And then the next contest that you were talking about that you said might get you don't know yet. Yeah. That might get put off. What was that? World champs. World champs. Yeah, and that definitely counts. That's for, qualifier. That's a test yeah, event. That's a, right? that's a test event for the Olympics, and it counts for sure. It's like one of the biggest ones. One sec. <laughs> Yes, it's stuff on me. I got this, this is Bruce's camera issue. Dude, I got the jankiest. You have to check every ten minutes just to see if his camera. I got the jankiest <laughs> cameras, and then the old podcast camera has been dropped out, maximized, and everything, and it's like barely holding on, and it glitches out too much. So I have a new camera that's better, but sometimes it doesn't work. So I gotta keep checking out just to make sure. That's it's that's why I need to buy merch, just so Bruce can afford to buy a new camera. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> or so I can just break even and make cool stuff. Uh, I'm just trying to put things, just trying out new ideas. I like it. I like being uh, a little bit ingenuitive, I guess. Is that the right word? Kind of? Maybe? I don't know. Also, big, big, big word for Bruce. <laughs> big word for a little kid. For the kid. Anyways, um, what are your thoughts on the upcoming season with COVID and like what the possibilities are like and just kind of your, how, does it give you a creepy feel um, overall? Because like I'm in the same boat as you kind of in terms of contests and a lot of skiers are, mm -hmm. except for the difference is this is an Olympic year. And if you guys aren't able to qualify for Olympics, yeah. that, like that's that, that's a huge thing because they might push it back a year or. Yeah, it's definitely a strange year. I mean, like we kind of are just like going in hoping that this is gonna be our qualifying year, just like doing the comps we need to do. But um, with COVID, obviously, like it's as is tricky. It? Like as like if a bunch of events get canceled, then it's gonna be pretty hard for them to like count it as. The Olympic qualifiers, if there's only, like, two comps, you know? How, is there any talk of canceling the Olympics? Then? There, I mean, I haven't heard any talk about canceling it. I've heard that, like, if the Summer Olympics get pushed another year, then, then we'll, the we'll obviously be, like, pushed back a year, which makes sense. Kind of. I also heard that, I wonder like, if they just, like, push it back a year forever. Like, it's just, like, permanently one year. <laughs> Everything is just permanently one year back. Yeah, I don't know. Or, like, know. do they try to get back on track with the I feel same like they would try and get back on track. Cause, like, but it the, doesn't really matter. If the they next... push it one year off, and then they push everything else one year off, then, it, like, they do one cycle of everything one year off, and then it's just back every two years. Yeah. If that makes sense. I mean, it makes sense, but I don't know, because, like, all the other areas, like, wait three years? like, the next, like, a Winter Olympics are in Italy, and they're already, like, starting to prepare, you know? Like, they're building, yeah. like, all the facilities and stuff. So that one's you... mine. I got dibs on that one. I, I got like dibs on that one. I'm going to try and go forward with that stuff. But, mm -hmm. yeah, I think it's just kind of like a waiting game for us right now. This one's see. China? Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Asian. Cool. Well, for a little background on uh, Megan, for some of you guys that don't know, you, I think I saw Jeff Lovelace made a post on this yeah. the other day. Uh, you've been skiing for like park skiing for like five years now, not even. Yeah, something like that. Like I um, think four or five years. Yeah. So came up uh, one year. You're you always skied like growing up, mm -hmm. not seriously or anything. Gymnastics, yeah. figure skating, all those lame sports. Kind of, uh. not, kind of being a pussy, but always competitive, always doing uh, sports and stuff. And then one year I got you out to the ski hill. We did a couple of tricks. You kind of liked it, kind of didn't like it. Did a front flip, did a back flip, a couple 720s, yeah. you know, got... A couple sketchy 720s. Yeah, and then, uh, was it the next year you decided to do, like, a couple contests with Jeff, or was yeah. it... Yeah. Yeah, it was, like, the end of that season when I started. Yeah. And I think I skied for maybe, like, a month or two. Yeah, not a lot. And not a lot, like, maybe, like, four, four times. Four days, yeah. Five yeah. Days, yeah. And then, like, after that year, I just, like, decided, I was like, oh, like, I guess I'll just join Agenda. But you were still doing a little bit of figure skating and gymnastics Yeah, I was time? still doing, like, yeah. full-time gymnastics, like, two or three days a week, and yeah, then skating two or three days a week, so. And then from there, did a year at the Timber Tour, got on to, were you ever on the Ontario team? Yeah, you were. For no, a, there, no, I, like, there the was Ontario, no Ontario team, team, there was, like, the year I was gonna move up to the Ontario team is just, I just got invited to the national team, so I was like, oh, well. Oh, yeah, because you went, you went from Jeff's team. I did, to... yeah, I did Jeff's team, and I did one year competing, like, temperatures and COTs with them, and then the next year I did Norams, and, like, I did well at the Norams, and, and then I got an invite to, like, the Canadian team. And then so your like, first year on oh, the yeah. Canadian team's, what, your third year skiing, or fourth year? Third it would have been, like, my 
third year of competition, but technically like my fourth. Yeah, year so you did a year. You did a year. Uh, three and a half. You did a year at Timber Tours and COTs. Yeah. A year at Norams. And then a and year. And then the... a year and the Canadian team and the first year on the Canadian team, Maggie, racked up the <laughs> big old World Cup dub, which for those of you guys who don't know yeah. is the overall World Cup uh, spot. Somehow, no one knows how she did it. She's probably cheating. It was by one point. Somebody like, should have tested her. It was literally, her. like, a miracle. I don't know how. Yeah, that's one yeah. of those things. It happens. You, yeah. did, you landed your runs, and other people didn't, and you beat one by this one, one, one musical <laughs> point. <laughs> but it's a point. Just snuck right in there like snuck, a snow snake. <laughs> a little sneaky snake. Yes, uh, but she didn't get drug tested, so that's probably why she did get that year. Um, <laughs> yes, I did. I got drug tested a bunch. That's pretty creepy. I don't know how I feel about that. I mean, I just I don't like mind getting drug tested or anything, but I don't yeah. like the idea of some random guy showing up at my door and being like, "All right, pina cup time." But I mean, you gotta do yeah, what you gotta no, do. Yeah, no, and like I don't know. Like, I think you it. know this story, but like oh, there's one story. time where like like you have to you have to like show up on time. Anyways, like. They showed up at my place and like I wasn't ready. I'd like already peed that morning, so I like didn't have to pee at all. Oh yeah. So I, I just like story. I I had to because you like have to. So I just started like chugging water and like eating as much stuff as I could. Anyways, I ended up like ingesting so much liquid that I just threw up like everywhere. Like I was just out on the deck like puking and the like, Because you're trying to drink enough to go Yeah, pee. I was trying to drink enough to go pee and like the like drug testing man was just like sitting outside like rubbing my back like it's okay <laughs> Don't worry, it's yeah. okay. No, not the funnest experience for sure. He probably just passed you out of pity. Mm -hmm. Um and then the year after that, so World Cup dub and then the year after that which was last year, um overall World Cup contest you did alright. It wasn't as good as the previous year I don't believe. But like you still did good, landed some cool runs. Mm -hmm. Got your first X Games invite. Went to X Games Aspen, which this year I, if it happens, I will be coming. I've made a solemn note that I'm not missing the X Games when you go. Yeah. So I've always wanted it's to go to X Games live in person. Yeah. I've ripped that. I've competed in the uh, Aspen Open course like three years now, and I've always wanted to go when the event's actually going on. So this year I'm going to come uh, if that happens. And then yeah. that was your first event. How did you do in Big Air? You got fourth. I think I got fifth in fifth in Big Air. No. Yeah, it was, it was fifth in big slope? air and sixth in slope, I think. Sixth in slope, yeah. But so, don't quote me. I should know that, but... You should know I, I don't, don't remember. You don't have to know that because uh, of the first X Games. And, well, I mean, I guess we'll, I'll ask you over here. What was that first experience like? Because going to X Games, for you, you came up so quick that you didn't... Look, we'll be, I'm going to be brutally honest here. You don't know. Like, for you, X Games is like, it's like, oh, X Games. But like, yeah. you never really like watched every X Games event as a no, kid growing yeah. up or anything like that. Because yeah. you're so you're doing figure skating and gymnastics, and like it wasn't really your focus. Yeah, yeah, that's what it's funny because like people always say that like if I ever do like interviews or people ask me questions like, oh like it must have been your dream to go to X Games since you were like a little kid. But like for skiing, and for stuff. me like I honestly didn't even really know what X Games was, and then like all of a sudden I'm getting an invite and I. I feel like I kind of like underappreciated like how big of a, how, how big how it, big it is, is and yeah. like how many people watch and like what it means to actually be a part of it. And I'm just like oh like that's cool like a new event that's yeah. that's cool that it's gonna be yeah kind of like televised. it's another contest like, yeah yeah and it, especially because you jumped so fast from timber tours yeah, which is like the yeah. lowest event possible yeah in terms of like ranked competition all the way to like World Cups and X Games yeah like within a span of like three years yeah which is like pretty crazy and then. This year, last year, which we were talking about, um, X Games Norway, kind of pooped the bed in, in slope style. I mean, I watched the runs. Did, I can't <laughs> yeah. even remember, because they had the new format. What do you think of the new format? Um, I think the new format like works well for Big Air, because you see a lot more tricks. Not for slow. And you have like more time to like land tricks. Um, but for slope, it was kind of tricky, like, to be able to come up with, like, two or three consistent or four runs. runs. Like, five runs. that's hard. Like, you get a lot of training, yeah. but that that's hard. So, I don't know if I, like, really loved it for slope, but I thought it was super cool for Big Air. Yeah. yeah. I think Big Air, it's cool. But that's, I think like, it, kind of the traditional Big Air anyways. Traditional like, Big Air is kind of just a throwdown anyways. Yeah. yeah, it's, a, yeah. it's a jam format yeah. where you get as much time as possible and you can do as many runs. But it does come down to, they take your two, top two best scores and then here it's yeah. overall impression. But like what I, X Games Aspen, the guys that won it, you they had Henry Carlo won it, and he landed every single trick he did. So yeah. he he didn't do he didn't do two really good tricks. He did five, like I would say really good tricks, but like 
A little less. A though. tiny bit less. Yeah. yeah, it's like 80% out of 100, yeah. but you're doing yeah. five instead of two. Yeah. And then that's kind of what happened in slope. The run, you just go from like landing one really hard run to take the top score mm -hmm. to kind of like seeing how many, like if you can land three different like pretty solid runs. Yeah, yeah. And I like Kobe Stevenson, the one in the X Games, he landed like five completely different runs. Yeah. And they weren't super gnarly, but they're, some of them were good, but yeah. like they're like insane how you can be that consistent. So. Yeah, it is pretty crazy. And I think people like didn't really know what to expect going in because like it was this new format, but they also like hadn't really like figured it, it well. out beforehand. So like everybody's like, like, do you want to see bigger tricks or like you'd rather see like mellower runs but more consistent? So I think it was kind of just yeah. like a test for that. And uh, yeah, anyway, so Nora or uh, Norway Big Air X Games gold, mm -hmm. clapping up, clapping them up. One different, uh, one different event each year, so. We got an X Games gold medalist on here, and a uh, semi-down syndrome midget, or little person. But with that being said, uh, what are your plans for the future and post-skiing? Like, mm, like yeah, let's go, let's go just post-skiing. Like, what, what do you do post-skiing, once skiing's over? Post-skiing, I don't know, I haven't put a ton of thought into it yet, but I definitely do still want to go to school, like, go to university. Harvard? I, like... <laughs> See, I don't think I'm quite a, a Harvard uh, student. I mean, that'd be cool, but um, yeah, I definitely want to like try out that that whole world and like see what school's like. Um, what career? I don't know yet. You, yeah, fair enough. Fair I haven't, enough. I haven't put a ton of thought into it. Here's another trick. One you might not have put a ton of thought into. What's your dream trick on skis? Dream trick. Um, switch dub bio with. That is a big dream trick. I like it. I like it. I was not expecting that. All right, I got two more questions for you, and then we're gonna rumble our little spears out of here. What are your thoughts on your magnificent brother, the one and only, the kid? That I, I wrote this down. I wrote this down on the sheet, and you have to answer. That's for how these interviews work. I don't know. I mean, I guess the first thing that would kind of like come to mind is. <laughs> is that you're the one that kind of like started by skiing, so. I definitely appreciate that. Do you like what our motto on the wall for is? Sure. This yeah. is our motto for the ASC going into the new year. Free the net 2021. Yeah. We I stand for all things revolutionary <laughs> in this world. I haven't repainted it so you guys can't see it, but it'll be up for the next video. It's, it's, it's kind of cool, like, hidden like that. Yeah, it just doesn't show up in the camera, which kind of... <laughs> yeah. Anyways, um, what are your thoughts about the ASC and what we're trying to do here? I mean, you, like, this is kind of just sprung together, like, very last minute the ASC and, like what we're trying to do with it, but from your point of view, what do you, what excites you and like, what do you not know? What do you want to know about what my, my plan is and Pat, so whenever he comes and helps with this stuff, his plan is, <laughs> but, um, um yeah. I'd say it's definitely like pretty cool. I don't think there's anything like, there's not much else out there that actually like, um, creates a community around action. Sports. Yeah. And just like takes in like stories in, um, people's own like personal experiences within freestyle skiing and other sports. So I think it's been yeah. like super cool to like hear like there's so many athletes that I knew that have been on the podcast that like I listened to the episodes and I'm like holy I did not know that about them like, yeah it's cool like so you learn so many new things and it's like cool just to hear like people's stories and how they got into it yeah for those of you guys who don't know she's talking about the podcast that I do in like literally that wall like yeah. two feet over that way um, I started an action sports podcast a while ago. And I've been interviewing, like, mostly people at, like, my level, I would say, of skiing. Yeah. They're, like, on the come up but aren't quite there, haven't made it yet. And it's very interesting to hear what everybody has to say. Um, in terms of the ASC and stuff, I think it's just, it's kind of, like, it's interesting because there's not a lot of things that bring bring uh, action sports together uh, in the way that I want to or me and Pat want to. There's obviously Nitro Circus and stuff like that. They put on really cool events. They put out great content, uh, movies, and they do the gnarliest stuff. But it's not really a community, it's just like the top tier people and there's they have a couple events which is cool, like the Nitro Games which they're integrating and uh, the shows which are awesome. But we're kind of here, like I kind of want to bridge the gap between like um, almost a barstool sports and uh, had another... But for, for, for skiing and other sports. For action sports, because yeah. there's, there's, no, like, there's not a really like, there's not like um, a news media site slash um, yeah. barstool sports that creates their own content uh, that also talks about what's going on in the action sports world that also provides for people 
And I kind of want to do like that in a way where we can also do things like host events. Uh, I kind of want to just bridge the gap between everything. Support people, get more people into the sport, like For what, all that sort of stuff. Me and Pat's biggest goal with ASC is to one day get it to the point where we can, um, we, we can like fully like support slash sponsor people uh, or kids like ourselves who had a hard time coming up through uh, an action sport just based off of uh, based off of opportunities. Like for a lot of action sports, in terms of dirt biking, in terms of skiing, in terms of like pick an action sport, go. Um, dirt biking. I just said that one. You have to go. <laughs> You're fast on your feet. Come on, reaction time. I don't know. Um, snowmobiling. Great. Perfect. That's a good one. It's expensive. Like if you want to compete in X Games for snowmobile racing or snowmobile mm -hmm. or uh, snowmobile, I guess it's called freestyle snow snow cross maybe. I don't know. Yeah, motocross. No, that's... that's that's dirt biking. <laughs> yeah, but um, it's expensive. You have to pay for a sled. You have to pay for trailers. You have to pay to fix sleds. You have to go to events. Like it. Like most people can't afford these opportunities. And I've seen a lot of really really good skiers and a lot of really really good action sports athletes and other disciplines that have had to hang it up before they're ready to and like regret it and not be able to really chase their dreams just based off of cost and opportunity alone, which yeah, I think is a, sure. a huge shame. And eventually me and Pat obviously want to build a compound that's like the coolest thing you can ever do as a kid. Yeah. Just have a compound with like every kind of like um, available like uh, training training facility. Yeah. Kind of basically like a Woodward on steroids or like a tr yeah. uh, Pastrana yeah, yeah. land. But I want to be able to uh, pay for these kids to live there for free and train and uh, go to events and like support them to do all that stuff and all they got to do is show up and put the work in and yeah, be able to sure. provide things for people like that. People that are motivated and people that do want to put the work in that otherwise wouldn't have these opportunities. That's like my the end goal. Like that would be a dream come true for uh, me and Pat to be able to do that. But that's also, that's one of the things that we got going on. Yeah, down the line. And it's obviously a far away in the future. Yeah, and I think even just like the fact that the ASC is able to like recognize smaller athletes is super huge because like mm -hmm. what I've found like the most is that it's really difficult to like like make a name for yourself and get yourself acknowledged within the sports community like mm -hmm, you have to be sure. you have to be at the top of your game for a long time in order for people to recognize you and like there's so many athletes that like me you know that are are like at the spot where they could be competing at the top level of their sport like they could be a but they don't have the recognition yeah they could be an X Games but nobody knows who they are yeah and that's also part of the thing that I want to do with this as we grow forward yeah. like the people that we sponsor or support like we're gonna be very picky with it um, but these people like I want to be able to have a platform that we can uh, help promote these people maybe uh, pay for a filmer to go make like a, a not even a season edit, like an edit well, segments for them, segments for them, help with promotion, help with uh, getting sponsors who are going to help mm -hmm. cover, like just that kind of stuff. I really want to help out little athletes and stuff. And that's what we're going to do with the riders collection of clothes that I want to do that on the line because that was like the, I, the easiest way for us to, uh, to support athletes that are, are like coming up is that we find an athlete that's dedicated, motivated and wants to work hard and we'll help promote them like via social media and all that stuff. But also we want to make like one piece of clothing, like a sweater like that, yeah. but like have the athlete work with us and make it their own personalized, like cool sweater, whatever they would like uh, design wise. And then we sell those for the athlete and then just give the athlete all the profit, which is like, I think a really cool way of us being able to uh, provide a little bit of like income to help them for their contest season or whatever they're working yeah, towards sure. film part or stuff without me going more broke than I already am. Which is the only because like I can't afford to just give some kid like yeah no, like a thousand dollars a year right yeah. now because I can't even afford my own stuff. But like if we could set it up in a way that people can um, almost buy like something that helps support this kid and like solely just goes towards uh, make like creating opportunities yeah. for somebody like that. I think that's really cool. Uh, we took rambled on about a bunch of nonsense and it's already twenty eight minutes instead of fifteen. So we're gonna get our spears out of here, Megan. Good to see you on. You want a magic wand yourself? Ready? I'm going to knight thee. And knight thee, Megan. Oh. Yeah, there you go. First ASC sport athlete. You can be the ringleader of all the little clams in the cult. Oh, so we're calling the ASC a cult uh, instead of a community community cult. <laughs> Doesn't really matter. We're not actually going to do any crazy things, but this is a cult of people that are very interested in action sports and, you know, just want to do gnarly things, hang out, have a good time, and push themselves. So we're out. Headbutt. What a solid, solid weapon, Megs. Thanks for doing oh, that. No worries. Anything, last words you want to say?
No. No? <laughs> meow. Meow. Meow.